Today I'm using Dreamweaver to demonstrate how site layout used to be done using complex nested tables versus today where we use cascading style sheets. I started creating websites in the late 1990s and back then you didn't have cascading style sheets to work with. You had a very limited version of HTML and really the alignment choices you had in HTML were limited to I'm going to show you here we have Seamus and he's left, right, or center. Now the original web pages are kind of ugly because most of the original pages were created by programmers because to create a web page you had to learn to hand code. We first started getting WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get, tools in the late 1990s. Back in 1997, my favorite was Word 97, which did great HTML for the time. I would not use Word today. Now, having a limit of left, right, and center made for some kind of boring web pages. Designers soon figured out that you could misuse tables to handle your design. Because instead of having left, right, or center, and you'll see here, I actually take this table out, I've got a table here, and I've merged a couple cells. This is two merged cells. So this is where my logo would go. This is where my masthead would go. Advertisements would typically go over here in this column. And this is all a basic table. I've combined a couple of columns here and combined a couple of rows here, but really I have a pretty simple table structure which could be the basic layout for a site. And the nice thing is, let's say I move Seamus into here, Seamus can be aligned here, left, center, or right into a smaller space. Or I could further define where he was going to be by inserting another table. And it could be something complex or it could be something simple. We could do one row with two columns. And left, right, or center in those two columns gets you a lot further. So you would be able to break down your site. And let's do a quick preview here. Yeah, yeah, whatever. And I've left the borders in here to show you how it really works, but our site design would be done with tables, and typically you would actually set the border to zero. And I only have two tables in here, so it should be taking me long to find both of them. And here's the other one, and a border to zero. And voila, you have a page design, which is effective at doing page layout. And it did a good job. The problem is that it got really complex if you went more than nesting one table inside the cell of another table, because you can keep doing this infinite to infinity. So we could keep inserting table inside of table, inside of, of a cell of another table. So we can keep inserting tables inside the cells of other tables. And that would make our code quickly get kind of ugly. More importantly, it didn't work as soon as we were became more ADA compliant and browsers for the blind that would read to them. It wouldn't, all the table structure would get in the way. So what we've moved to is using a CSS layout. Because when you do CSS, you separate the style from the content. So while the style is actually a little more complicated in some ways than the table, you only have to write them once because with the CSS styles, you can put them on one external page, link to it, and it can form at three, 300 or 3,000 pages. So it is, since you only have to do it once, it is more effective. It takes less time to download and it makes pages faster to load. Plus, if you look at the code here, we have the all of the styles for the whole thing is up here at the top, and this was done by Dreamweaver. But once the styles are over, and those styles could format all of the pages in your site, then this is all of our content, and it's separate. 
and it has multiple advantages. First, it's better for ADA, which is really a key responsibility of a designer. You have to be ADA compliant. You have to make things accessible to people with disabilities. You must. Legal requirement, especially if you're working on a website that is in any way funded by the government. Secondly, by separating the style from the content, you can use JavaScript and you can detect if your page is being accessed by a cell phone, a tablet, a desktop, a laptop, you can know how big your screen size is. And you can pick a different style sheet or reflow your styles according to the device that's accessing it. It is something you could not do with tables. So why am I teaching you table layout? Well, because table layout really started to go away around the mid to around 2005, 2006. There are a lot of websites out there that are, have been around a long time that still exist in that table format. There's a good chance you may have to take something that's in an existing table structure and bring it into CSS styles. So that's why we do one really basic table layout. So you can see how it worked. That way, if you ever run into it, you know what you're looking at. And you can figure out how the cell structure is arranged, bring in divs to replace them, and you can style it correctly in CSS. So I do teach you how to make a table-based site, but I don't want you to do it professionally. Ideally, you use CSS for everything. But I want you to know what you're looking at, if you ever run into one of them, because websites were designed that way for over a decade.